Touchdown to Urban. Dallas, Houston, two Texas cities. Two cities with pretty much nothing else in common. Cosmo versus Blue Collar. Historically, their football teams came off that way, especially in the 70s when the rugged Oiler run game faced off against America's team with their fancy cheerleaders and two Lombardi trophies. But there is much more to this regional rivalry than that starting with the Houston Texans, whose official start began with upending their neighbors to the north. 69,000 fans who were crushed when the Oilers left are here tonight for their new team, the Texans. Cowboys come with four, Carr with time, complete down to the five, five fans on touchdown, Billy Miller. Are you kidding me? Carr. Bradford! Touchdown! And the fans of Houston truly have something to cheer about for the first time since 1996. Four years later, Dallas answered. And this game, despite being mostly a forgettable blowout, was historically relevant. It would be the last win ever for Drew Bledsoe. Meanwhile, another quarterback through the first passes of his career. Well, here comes the quarterback they've been crying for, Tony Romo. Romo's first NFL pass is caught. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown to Terrell Owens. And Romo has his first NFL touchdown throw. In one of the most odd games of the Dallas-Houston catalog, local boy Bucky Richardson from Texas A&M made his starting debut against the Cowboys at Texas Stadium in 1994. Warren Moon had signed with the Vikings that offseason while veteran Cody Carlson got hurt. That put Richardson in the saddle against the two-time defending Super Bowl champs. The Oilers gave the Cowboys all they could handle, but a team destined to go 2-14 didn't have enough firepower to stay with the team of the 90s. I think right now we're the America's team, not Dallas. So take that for what it's worth. We got a battle this day. But we are for it. This is the real Long Star shootout. And these Texas teams two stepped in a marathon at the Astrodome. Led by Moon. Houston's offense put up nearly 600 yards, but were nearly done in by their special teams. And they got that one too, and they might have a touchdown out of it. Williams scored. And he got another one stuck. Saxon hits it a mile in the air. And did it touch somebody? Bates has it. Dallas ball. Special teams, do you believe the Cowboys today? One of the greatest teams in NFL history was facing the most talented roster in the league. And we were a year early for the Cowboys dynasty. A little draw to Smith. Bennett Smith outside. He lost the ball and Houston's got it. And Moon goes complete. Warren Moon hit his last 10 passes. He's hit his last 11 passes. There it is, left side, Lorenzo White. And now cuts back. Warren Moon trying to throw a block. He told us before the game, I thought this week I was going to have to find a real job. He's got one now. You might have noticed that Moon had all day to throw. That wasn't the case in his first ever meeting with the Cowboys, where he was sacked an NFL record 12 times. So Moon is experiencing one of the, some of the growing pains of so many young quarterbacks with high expectations have already gone through. He's coming in from Canada. This is a whole new ball game. And he wants to win. He wants to win now. And it's, a, it's an absolute, totally frustrating thing to have to go out there and be planted on your back. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go for Texas. Have some pride. Nearly three decades later, a 34-year-old quarterback was showing he still had some game left, including more than enough for the Defensive Player of the Year. Different salary structure. Romo, spin, throw, end zone, caught! Terrence Williams, touchdown Cowboys! Tony Romo digging into the bag of trash. 
tricks. The Cowboys wouldn't have it easy as this sucker came down to the wire. DeMarco Murray gained 192 yards and Arian Foster 172 as each played a huge role in this slugfest. Ultimately, the veteran Romo would set up Dallas in OT. Romo. Oh, up in the air. Juggle. Dez Bryant. Oh, spectacular grab for the win. Redemption for Bailey. Yes. He knocks it through. The Cowboys win in overtime. When you talk veteran quarterbacks in the history of these two cities, look no further than George Blanda and Lynn Dawson. Blanda was in the NFL from 1949 to 1975, lacing them up until he was 48 years old. Dawson would also retire following the 75 season at the tender age of 40. They faced off against one another in the most thrilling AFL championship game ever between the Houston Oilers and the Dallas Texans. The game of 24 and watch it. By the way, Texans owner Lamar Hunt, a Dallas native and SMU grad, moved his team to Kansas City that offseason, where they became the Chiefs. By 1975, the Oilers would start tasting success again under the direction of charismatic coach Bum Phillips. They made it all the way to the AFC Championship in 1978 as Love Blue and a rookie named Earl Campbell took the NFL by storm. On second and eight, Campbell just outruns everyone to the right. Look out! He's gone! He is gone all the way! Houston was considered a bona fide Super Bowl contender the next year in 1979. Dallas, meanwhile, had made the previous two Super Bowls and earned the moniker America's team. They also had the game's best quarterback in Roger Staubach. The Oilers had the game's best player in Campbell. Many predicted they'd face each other in Super Bowl XIV, all of which set up the premier game of this Texas legacy in front of millions on Thanksgiving Day, 1979. Staubach to throw. Lesson to Campbell, first down and more, 50, 40, 30, 20, touchdown, Houston. From the 21, screen, Newhouse, he's got running room, 20, 50, 5, touchdown. On second and goal, Dorsett, touchdown. Earl Campbell, big hole, and he's gone to the races again. A pump fake to Merkins. Pass to Rini, wide open, Renfro at the 20. He got a block from the official and goes in for a touchdown. Fake to Campbell, plenty of time, Burrow, touchdown, Ken Burrow. This instant classic came down to the final Cowboys drive and drop. Just missed connections, and I think Staubach thought he should have had, yes, his Ooh. actions tell a story. He thought he had a touchdown. Okay, that might have been a tough catch. Either way, the Oilers prevailed on this day, and unfortunately for football fans everywhere in Texas, there would be no dream Super Bowl. That's because both teams were bounced in the postseason. Dallas got Billy Waddy by a familiar playoff opponent, while Houston lost partially on one of the most controversial calls of all time. The Oilers six yards away from a tie. It is Renfro, touchdown, or is it? A late call, the official did not make any signal, and now apparently has said no touchdown. Let's see if the feet come down now. He's got the ball. It was not called one, but there's no doubt that was a Houston touchdown. And now the Oilers are denied a touchdown. Oh, my. The Cowboys and Oilers would play twice more on Thanksgiving. Once in 1988, when Moon led Houston to a 25 17 win, and again in 1997, when a national audience was introduced to two of the NFL's newest stars, Steve McNair and Eddie George, who were playing for the Tennessee Oilers that day, which didn't give this rivalry the same feel. Dallas and Houston, a unique rivalry with its own legacy.